So today on RC Guy Garage, what, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> so I thought I'd give you um, part of that basic series. So this is a this is a part of that series called the basics, where I'm actually working on the DBXLE 2.0 from Losi, and I've come across on a couple of forums that for some strange reason that people are having a difficult time with these wheels and actually getting the beadlock and everything to, I guess, fit and go on and people, you know, coming across having nightmares and, and whatever. So what I figured I'd do is I'd show you my way. If you saw the thumbnail, maybe the thumbnail dragged you in like, the heck does hairspray have anything to do with a beadlock wheel? So. What I'll do is I'll show you um, why I actually use hairspray on a number of things for RCs in this episode of The Basics from RC Guy Garage. Let's just break into it. So you can see this wheel right here. We'll just get this stuff out of the way. Um, this wheel right here has actually never been broken down. You can see we've got the sand and grit and everything in there. And... Um, Obviously, with these vented wheels, if you drive in water, what happens? Water ends up getting inside the wheel, and you can come across issues. So, what I'll do is I'll show you. You got to take off uh, 20 screws, so it's 10 per side. So, 10 on the back side, 10 on the front side, and that is with a uh, 2.0 millimeter or 2 millimeter um, Allen driver or hex key, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I'm going to use a driver just because it makes it easy. And we'll just pop all of these out. If you have one of these like little vector guys, I definitely wouldn't recommend leaving the screws like on the table because you'll find probably half of them on the floor by the time he's done. So you can see we got the 10 screws from that side right there. We'll actually put them in something or put them away from a uh, little vector here. Now we're on that uh, front beadlock side. Same thing, just take out all these screws. And then uh, just popping the rings off is just basically just grabbing them and popping them out. All right, so you can see we've actually we actually did get some water in there um, at some point. I'm not sure if it bypassed the actual bead itself or what happened, um, but that does happen, especially when you submerge these wheels. So this back side looks like you can kind of maybe see the same thing, um, but obviously to get these wheels off. You don't want to push the rim through this way. You actually want to push it through that back side. So basically you just push the push the rim out. So uh, this one actually doesn't seem like uh, we got anything on the inside. But we'll go ahead and we'll clean up the back side of this wheel just to get all the sand and stuff out of it. Uh, we will clean this up anyway. We're going to pop this. We're going to pop this uh, foam out of here. Obviously the foam is a one-way foam. Uh, like like what people should know concerning these wheels. So I could get a little chunk there. Don't know what that's from. Uh, looks like it's from that other side right there. But um, we're going to take this out and see if there's any sand or wetness inside this wheel. Um, I doubt there is. But you just... Actually, it is a little moist. Very slight bit. But you can see, actually, the sand actually did get in there. And if you feel this, you can actually feel the... The foam is a little kind of uh, damp. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take this and put it in the dryer. And then check out check out all the sand that's in there. So believe it or not, if you leave that stuff in there, it actually will eventually erode uh, your foam. It's right there into the trash. We'll flip it inside out. And then what you can do is like take a brush and kind of like brush this or use a vacuum or whatever. Right now what I'm going to use, I'm just going to use the um, vacuum attachment just to get the sand out of there. Nice and clean. Yeah, that looks good. Looks a lot better now. Now we just obviously flip it back inside out. 
Good to go. Now you can see on the table. Um, you can see some of that sand. Now I actually pulled through. Get a little vector out of the way here. And check out the sand that actually just came out from us just pulling the, um, the actual rim off. See right there? Look at that sand right there. Nice little pile of sand right there that we ended up getting out of there. So we'll take this and we'll uh, put it in the dryer. Press dry, we'll put the heat on low, and then give it a start. As we wait for that 20 minute cycle, I guess, to complete, what you can do is just go ahead and clean up your rim, clean up your bead lock, actually front and back, make sure the tie is all set. And then uh, after that 20 minutes, which you don't have to wait, um, we'll pop that foam out and then we'll do the reinstallation. We've got our foam out of the dryer, and now it's basically just taking and putting it into the rim. It's kind of obvious. You got the smaller section here, you got the larger section here. Obviously, the larger section goes on the larger side, and it's going to be a lot easier to actually work on the larger section or portion of the actual uh, tire. Lay the paper towel down, and then we'll take the we'll take the uh, hairspray. And we're going to coat the hole inside like that right there. And then the easiest way to do this is try to align a couple of your lugs um, while you're stuffing this in just to kind of make it easy. And the faster you work, uh, the easier it's going to be because this stuff will al allow, the uh, hairspray will actually allow you to shift the wheel if you actually had to shift the actual rim uh, into place. So, we'll just give it that little bit of a twist. Looking good on this side. Looking okay here. Just going to give it a little bit of a crank. Now, you can pretty much see that all the, uh, all the holes uh, kind of line up to the tire itself. Um, might not be perfect, but you can just kind of move things around. Uh, to how you like it, uh, and then the same thing on this front. So this is actually the uh, this is the part that I think people are actually having uh, trouble with. And we're going to install. Doesn't make a difference which lock ring you do uh, first, but um, the important thing is just making sure that this rubber is exactly where you want it to be. And that looks pretty good. Slightly off, but I think we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lock ring and I'm just going to slide it into place. I'm going to grab these screws and just place the screws into the holes for now on each. Now I'm going to take my driver and I'm actually going to drive a couple of these screws just into place. All right, so now you can see that those are kind of like in place. Now here's the trick, okay? This is, this is the whole reason why we have this hairspray out. What I'm gonna now do is I'm actually gonna spray the entire inside. I'm gonna give a little bit of a douse on the outside. What that does is allows it to be slick, okay? And you can pretty much push the tire into, um, into position this way. It allows it to be slick enough. You can actually hear it kind of like clicking or locking in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do in every other. 
not all the way down. Give it kind of like a press. And if you need a little bit more hairspray, spray a little bit more on. Now what you want to do is just basically take your finger or your thumb and kind of push around on that entire bead. And now you should be good to lock it down. Yeah. The Joker guy. I can't remember the names of the two movies. That we saw? No, that he was written. The first the first one that he was in that you said he was in, I didn't recognize him for that. Alright, so we're back. Um they're all torqued down and then when you give it that look on that profile you can see how it's actually uh been perfectly seated all the way around. Now we're just gonna flip it over to the other side. And we'll do the same exact thing. Make sure you clean your rings. That was one thing I didn't tell you to do on the other ring. But it should be kind of like, you know, Captain Obvious. So, um, we'll just place that ring right in place. Just like that. We'll get a couple of screws. Well, not a couple. We'll get the rest of the screws. And we'll put these in place. And I'm just going to um, buzz them in real quick. We're not going to torque them down. It's just basically catching a couple of threads. Um, you can put them in however you want uh, for this particular way. I'm just going to do kind of like a little staggered pattern. So you can see um, they're pretty much close to being in the same amount. I guess you want to say all around, but the whole point is to be able to give yourself those gaps all the way around on the outside and the inside. So you can go ahead and take the hairspray and then spray the hairspray in like we had done before. And basically, you're just kind of like pushing it down and in. Now I'm just going to give them a little buzz. We're not seating it. We're just giving it a little bit more pressure. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our finger or thumb or whatever we want to use. I'm going to go around. I'm going to push the tire into its track or place or whatever now we should be able to just torque it right down and there you go um, you don't have to worry about wiping off the excess right now, but um, when you look at that profile, you can see that the bead is consistently um, basically down all the way around on the entire wheel. So uh, that is just the way that I do my bead locks, especially when it comes to um, what may be considered possibly a tougher wheel to uh, do bead locks on, like, you know, this kind of style uh, wheel. So if you like videos like this from RC Guy Garage, you already know what to do. So this was just a uh, this was just a video on what's called the basics, and it was the basics of installing the uh, bead lock on the Low C DBXLE 2.0. Uh, and it works obviously with the uh, other generations as well. So again, thanks for watching.
Warrior.